I got a call from my friend Jeff DeBoer. Would I be interested in working with him on a project? So we, we were approached by a client who wants to have a golden snitch. Our client is a huge Harry Potter fan and he approached Jeff to help him make something magical happen. He plans to propose to his girlfriend with the engagement ring inside a golden snitch. The first thing I did was to make some domes of roughly the right size. In order to make him a ring box, we're going to be taking two domes, and these aren't fully formed yet, but we're going to be making a locking device that actually makes a beautiful box. So we know we've got to adapt all of that surface decoration anyway in order to actually make yeah. a functional object. Yeah. We're also being asked to make the But this isn't just about the ring box. Our client wants this to be a full-scale snitch sculpture with wings and a presentation stand. But later on, as, as a sculpture and a keepsake, this two-inch ball with wings sitting on its base becomes a fairly large sculpture. This looks like a, such a simple, but it's really not a very simple project. After laying out the proposed snitch form, and before committing to chasing, I needed to resolve a problem. So now we have a problem that's both an aesthetic and a mechanical problem. The client isn't going to have the wings initially, or, they, or even if they're made, yeah. he's going to be using this object isolated mm -hmm. with the bumps. We should make these parts. Yeah. In the end, our snitch body will be transformed into a sculpture with wings, so we need to ensure the parts fit together perfectly and work before we join everything together. We could notch in a key mm -hmm. and have a key on here too. Absolutely. I actually think that maybe the key is the way to go. Yeah, so I think what we're looking at now is going and raiding your metal locker and seeing what's in mm -hmm. there. Some of the tasks need the special equipment that Jeff has at his studio. We need to make and fit very precise metal parts for the mechanism that will allow the wings to attach to the body. Oh, it's centered, it's square. I don't know what else I could ask for. <laughs> have to be very careful that we don't remove any unnecessary material. So that's the key I need to cut. Even during the making process, our design decisions have to be malleable and may be modified on the fly to achieve the result that we want. I'm thinking about adding another piece of material on top oh, of this, okay. making another piece and oh, okay. soldering that on here too. Now the next question is, do I just saw this thing off? With our functional wing bases made, I could finally chase and repousse those domes. Then I had the challenge of building the locking mechanism for the snitch body and the even bigger challenge of soldering it together without destroying all that work. No pressure. We needed the big tools again to make parts for the base, perfectly bending the brass bar, joining it to an aluminium dome, and then fitting the tiny connector, which is just like the wing buds, that will allow the snitch to rest on top of its presentation stand. Now the reason why I'm not using a lubricant is because I don't want the hole to be greasy. 
The nice thing about a curved thing going into a straight thing is it'll jam, eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. very, very stable. Let's So we're gonna get the bottom of your snitch. Let's put a hole in it. Okay. Stick that on here. Jeff's turn to feel the pressure. Just drill a massive hole in the bottom of the finished snitch dome and solder on the tiny base connection. Uh, and if we're off by a tiny little bit, like I said, we can manipulate the snitch. And now the wings. From humble beginnings in a gently formed sheet that will give the wings volume, chased lines suggest feathery details. A six inch long wing bone will support the snitch and allow it to take flight. The wing is held together by rivets, individually shaped to fit the form. Oh, and by the way, she said yes.